here to discuss, we have with us live in the studio, Presidential Advisor for Poverty Alleviation, Larry Gadon. Good evening, sir, and welcome to the big story. Yeah, good evening, and uh, thank you for having me here. Sorry, to be honest, I don't even know what to call you. Can I even still call you attorney? Yes, attorney or secretary, just to say. Are you at secretary mm. level at yes. with, for, with this position, that secretary mm -hmm. yes, cabinet yes. level? Okay, uh, so. No less than... Uh, uh, Executive Secretary Lucas Bersamin calls me Secretary even in, in his uh, statements. Okay, thanks for clearing that up for us. Now, about the attorney title, um, yes. how is that disbarment going along, uh, well, Secretary? Uh, they announced it in the media, but I haven't received any notice yet. So, uh, by uh, procedure, I can still uh, uh, file a motion for reconsideration. And disbarment is not, uh, does not have res judicata. Uh, principle na pwede ka mag, mag reapply anytime. And ako naman, hintayin ko lang na mamatay si Justice Marie Vicione that I apply. <laughs> oh, because that, knock on wood. Yeah. Knock I mean, on because wood. That, 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 that uh, disbarment is just a vengeance of uh, Justice Marie Vicione uh, against me because I filed an, uh, an impeachment case against him in 2019. And I also filed the impeachment case against uh, uh, Maria Lourdes Sirelo, who was booted out of the Supreme Court. I don't Court. think we can call it that, sir. I mean, there have been a number of disbarment cases filed against you yes. right, over the oh, viral are, videos. So yes. I don't think we can call it payback at no, this point. No, because all of these are just uh, nuisance cases. And then how eh, come? Supreme Court na to, sir. I don't oh, think nga, we can oh, call pero, it nuisance. Alam mo, ang, ang Supreme Court meron doon pinipili eh. How come uh, Attorney Chell Jokno, in a hearing before the Supreme Court, uh, submitted a fake document and still the Supreme Court did not uh, mind. I Laila don't know Dilima. about that case, mm -hmm. so La I can't uh, it comment was, it on was, it. It was all over the, the news. Mm -hmm. Laila Dilima, who admitted in the Senate hearing, no less than a Senate hearing, admitted that she had an illicit, illegal, immoral relationship with her driver bodyguard. Then how come she was not disbarred? And Laila Dilima, defied openly the order of the Supreme Court in allowing Gloria Arroyo, President Gloria Arroyo, okay. Arroyo to travel abroad. She defied, she openly defied that order. Then how come the Supreme okay. Court did not even bother to call her attention? Right, so, right. just because I am a BBM supporter, si Mari Vicionen, e pinag-inita na ako. Okay. That's why I'm going to die. Now, off the hand na tayo. We can't <laughs> go back to the old cases. And not only that, that I, would like, I would like to clarify that I was being disbarred, not because I am dumb, stupid, mm -hmm. or because I stole a property of the client. No, they were very clear. It was because of the abusive, sexist, oh. and mm -hmm. misogynistic mm -hmm. language. They were very clear but about it. But I did it. not upload it. Yeah, there but was it still case, was released. But it was supposed to be a private. And not, not only that, uh, it, it was matter. done during the height of the campaign. Mm. And the, the trouble with you people, media, is that you are pointing uh, your finger against me. Then how come you are not uh, blaming Raisa also for uh, spreading lies, everyday lies against BBM? And that was done during the campaign. Okay, no one's pointing fingers we at affected. you, sir. And yeah. uh, secondly, uh, I'm not going to comment on what Raisa did, right? Uh, but in any case, um, the Supreme Court has spoken. That is about as much as we're going to discuss It was very tonight. unfair. So, mm -hmm. Then how come mo, joke, no? How well, come Laila that, Dilima? Yeah. Well, you can oh, put that into the MR. It was a political It was a vendetta against me by uh, Justice Marie Vicione. Okay. All right. Uh, Sec, we'll just uh, take that story. When the developments happen, we can discuss that. But no, for I'm now, curious, it's like, how, how far will you go to get the attorney title back? Madali lang naman yun eh. Pag namatay si Leone, di mag-file ako ng uh, motion for reconsideration. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Siya lang uh, naman na may kagagawa nun eh. Mm. Right, Sek. Mm. Pero ano kasi, ito yung... Um... Nagihiganti. In fact, uh, some people in the Supreme Court actually called me up uh, before the day it was uh, issued on the media. Uh, they were convincing me to tell BBM, uh, President of BBM, to call the Supreme Court to withhold the issuance of that uh, disbarment. Because they probably wanted to trade something for me uh, they want me they want a trade off for me again uh, uh, against me and uh, the appointment of a chief justice maybe so we can't we, we're in no position to fact check that but speaking oh, you can of ask, uh, speaking of trade off <laughs> yes this position that you got is it a trade off Did, no. was this a reward is what some people are saying 
reward right? for your support in exchange for in your support. In my 37 years of uh, professional uh, existence, I was 80 to 90 percent corporate executive. I'm running companies, director of a corporation, mm -hmm. only 10 to 20 percent as a lawyer. I did not really practice law. In fact, my last appearance in court was in 2014. Mm -hmm. And I did not, uh, I did not uh, renew my attendance in the MCLE because I, I have no, no, no plans of... Uh, no, no, uh, what I'm talking about is your position as presidential advisor for poverty alleviation. Some people are saying that that's your reward for supporting BBM during the presidential election. No, uh, BBM really needs someone who can help him. Sir, what, it's what, not just what, a reward. What would you say your expertise would yeah. be when yeah, it comes when, to poverty in, in the alleviation? Corporate world. Uh, because well, it's, it's, iba po yung top level sa yung work really the development work down there well any experienced executive can do that all you have to do is know the problem mm -hmm. and so, the alternate, uh, ano alternative ano po problema what is the deep seated root of poverty in the philippines mm -hmm. we've heard the report a while ago hunger increasing apart from hunger puro food programs so pinag-uusapan natin mm -hmm. pero ano po talaga yung nakikita root yung problema ng, ng root poverty cause talaga is a lack of jobs eh. Mm -hmm. Bakit walang pera yung tao? Hindi makakain, walang pera. Kasi walang trabaho. Mm -hmm. So yun po ba ang focus niyo uh, as a... Yun ang po uh, ang focus ko ngayon. Talaga uh -huh. yung uh, how to uh, generate jobs. Ano po yung plano, Sir Kenye? Paano yun yung bang ilatag for us? Ano yung nap, uh, napag-usapan ninyo ni Presidente? Mm -hmm. What are the plans to generate more jobs? And not just any jobs, but quality jobs. Quality jobs, actually. Um, permanent jobs. And uh, out of the 75 more or less a uh, million Filipinos uh, in the labor market. Around 56% are in the uh, service sector and 28% in the industrial sector and 18% in the agricultural sector. Uh, sa, kaya meron tayong tinatawag na endo. Eh. Mm -hmm. Because in the service sector, palaging ano yan eh, yung... Uh, contractual. Mm -hmm. Contractual, mm -hmm. uh, seasonal, uh, non-permanent uh, jobs. So, even if they have a job for three months to four months. Ano po sa talagang sa ENDO? Kasi ENDO, eh, syempre, as employer, iba po oh. yung, ano, ang, Ay, iba rin yung take ng mga employer. Eh. Oh. You, can, you can't really avoid it eh, because uh, there are some jobs really that are uh, temporary uh, and uh, cash one. Yun nga, balik tayo dun sa, sa tanong, oh. no, uh, Sec? Kaya nga dapat i-increase natin yung yung portion doon sa industrial sector at saka agricultural so, sector. So, yun yung plano. Kung baga, kasi plano, puro, malaki yung share ng service sector right now. So, dadamihan natin ng job sa mga pabrika, basically. Yes. Oh, at uh, yeah. sa mga bukid. Yes. At, Actually, uh, that's, the, the, that's the solution. But we have to take care of our uh, infrastructure first, the uh, basic uh, factors that will contribute to uh, bringing up a, uh, an increased uh, uh, industrial uh, jobs and Yung we have infrastructure, to improve sir. our uh, world, uh, mm -hmm. world competitiveness uh, stand because as of now we are the lowest uh, in, in, in Asia, uh, second only to Mongolia. Sorry, yeah, okay, sorry. We have to improve by several notches right, our right. Co world competitiveness Of course, uh, everybody stand. wants that, of course, yes. right. But so, sorry, sir, I didn't quite get an answer in what you just said because Everybody thought of that already. Improve quality of jobs, increase the number of jobs in agriculture, manufacturing. Every single president in the past has thought of that already. But what is different this time around? What are we trying to do to actually get make there. it happen? Uh -huh. Yes, uh, just recently, President uh, Marcos Jr. signed uh, uh, the new Agricultural Emancipation Act, uh, which will uh, which condones and the rights of all the debts of the farmers yes. mm -hmm. so that they can use the uh, income, their income, into uh, a new uh, or infusion of, to, uh, of uh, new infusion of capital for their uh, uh, farms. Uh, una na yon. And they are now uh, being given uh, support uh, in terms of uh, seedlings and fertilizers and also the logistics, the distribution. But those aren't jobs, sir. Huh? Those aren't jobs. They're temporary subsidies, if you call it. Temporary support. Well, yeah, but, mm -hmm. but in effect, they will have a permanent effect uh, over a period of about one or two years. Kasi mag increase na yung production. Eh. And it will help in, in the theory, poverty alleviation right. because magmumura yung pagkain. Ooh. And uh, we are trying to uh, 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 
attract more farmers to go back to farming because some of them have already left their farms. Eh? Right. So what about uh, the infrastructure project? Siyempre si BBM meron siyang build better more, di ba? Yung yeah. last admin may build, build, build. Can we start with that? I mean, these infrastructure projects are going to require a lot of manpower. Um, have you thought about um, tapping these planned projects, this pipeline of uh, President Marcos Jr. Uh, to provide jobs for the poor? Yes, uh, the infrastructure uh, build, 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 or build better mm -hmm. and more uh, will, of course, uh, generate uh, a lot of jobs, thousands of jobs. And ano na rin yan, makakatulong na rin sa poverty alleviation. And if these uh, infrastructures are complete, completed, malaking tulong yan sa economy because the movement of goods and uh, people will be easier and cheaper. Mm -hmm. And it will help in the poverty alleviation. Sir, nabanggit niyo po yung ano, um, mga trabaho, jobs. Nabanggit niyo rin po yung uh, agriculture. Uh, but ay, medyo matagal po yun eh. Infrastructures, take, it will take long. Hmm. Will take for, for us to see, uh, reap the benefits of that, what are the short-term and medium-term plans, immediate areas that you are, or you propose to address? Uh, na po ba tayo nabigay sa Pangulo as pres uh, presidential well, advisor? Well, actually, I am still in... I was only uh, appointed Medyo in July 18. Medyo bago lang. Mm -hmm. uh, bago lang, no? So, wala pang... So, nasan po kayo? Sa proseso po na, kayo na... Ang proseso ko ngayon is I'm going to uh, conduct meetings with uh, uh, several agencies who are involved in the uh, poverty alleviation programs like the NAPSI. Yes, I was just going to point out. Urban yeah. Poor, mm -hmm. And the uh, Indigenous People and the uh, DSWD. Mm -hmm. I have requested a meeting with uh, the top, top official so that I can assess uh, what are the things that are needed to be done. Um, kasi ang role naman ng... Uh, Kung baga, advisor uh, kasi kayo eh. Wala advisor, naman kayong hindi cabinet. Hindi implementor eh. uh, I'm not an implementing agency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I will just uh, assess uh, a program if it, is, if, if it needs to be enhanced mm -hmm. or uh, if, if it needs to be set aside or if there are some programs that will be added to what we are doing right now. And uh, uh, we are quite doing well naman because uh, as you can see, the employment rate has gone up to 95.7 uh, mm -hmm. and our unemployment rate is now only 4.3. And uh, things but, are improving. But, but how do you see that uh, dynamic between you and the other agencies with which you overlap. For mm -hmm. instance, NAPSI, National Anti-Poverty Commission, course, as well as the Presidential D. Commission for the Urban Poor as well. Actually, yes. there's a lot of agencies that are looking into alleviating poverty. So how do you see your role playing with all of them? Uh, we are, uh, it's like a conductor of an orchestra. Uh, so kayo yung conductor? Parang ganon. Oo. Mm -hmm. So, do meron bang interagency kind of task? And uh, of course, there will be an interagency uh, kind of uh, implementation because uh, the policy of President Bongbong Marcos uh, is uh, to have a one government approach on dealing with the poverty alleviation. It's just that uh, several agencies are handling the program stuff. So, uh, Ang tanong ko dyan, ano, sec, no? wala bang uh, bureaukrasya, that red tape na favorite naming pag-usapan? Mm. Um, di ba mas mahirap pagka mas maraming cooks in the kitchen? So, Naalala so, ko si uh, mm. presidential advisor Clarita mm. Carlos. Uh -oh. Yung nangyari sa kanya, she was there for uh -oh. a while, then a short while. Uh Oo, -oh. uh -oh. naano rin siya. I know, it's just that uh, my role is, uh, actually, the office of the presidential advisor on poverty alleviation mm -hmm. is directly under the office of the president. And uh, you know, naman, mm. in, in uh, the theory of delegation, mm -hmm. there are so many agencies Correct. Uh, involved in this uh, right. poverty alleviation mm -hmm. thing. So, uh, what the president needs is someone who, he's, who, who, who will become his extension on uh, uh, analyzing, mm -mm. evaluating mm -mm. the programs, and monitoring the, the implementation of the programs. So, are you saying you're going to have the last say? It, if so you're the parang, simply, oh, kasi the because president. for instance, you Kung gather all of these, you gather all of these agencies together. Of course, it can't be helped sometimes that there are differing opinions, right? At the end of the day, do you have the president's ear and do you get the last say in the programs? Uh, we cannot really say that last say. Mm -mm. It depends on the president if he will listen or if if he can find the the recommendations uh, much better than 
the ones that are being implemented right now, then uh, he would probably... Well, sir, just on a final note, um, as a presidential advisor for poverty alleviation, what would you say would, you, would be your personal metric for mm. success that you have indeed alleviated poverty? Well, the target your... of the president is to cut into half the incident of uh, poverty alleviation. Mm -hmm. By and, 2028. Uh, Yes, uh, as of now, uh, we have uh, around 18% of our uh, uh, citizens of our citizens who are under the poverty level. And uh, if we can cut it by half uh, by the end of this term, then that would be a big achievement already. Okay, Seka, basta pag may programa na katatawan ka namin ulit to ah, yes, check up course, on your you progress. And if naman. you have, of course, delivered on your promises, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Presidential Advisor for Poverty Alleviation, Secretary Larry Gadon. Thank you, sir. Thank you.